Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Wash. Today is September 18th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. We got British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. Check out the frontal system pushing off to the east. Brought some measurable precipitation across the area. We'll look at those totals here in a moment. Brought some lightning BC, as you can see it firing up there. And then some lightning across southeast Washington and Idaho as this front continues its march off to the east. And then our next system is here on the southern coast of Alaska. And this one will be diving down across Pacific Northwest, carving out across Oregon, California, Nevada also. And then it looks like an active storm track will be pointed at the Pacific Northwest. So stick with me through the video here. Some fun stuff to look at as we go. The NAM3 cam as of last night, check it out. Didn't do too bad with uh, some of that precipitation across the central Puget Sound here. Probably overdid some of this for some of the areas here, but not for the central sound king county and yeah not too bad of a job overall here from the nam 3km and you can see these totals here some areas got towards two tenths of an inch around king county and you know a few hundredths of an inch towards bellingham and a few hundredths of an inch out towards the coast or as well as maybe just trace amounts for olympia there and some light precip down towards tacoma as well looking at SeaTac, 70 degrees yesterday no precipitation yet that won't show up until tomorrow's totals here but we did cool off quite dramatically you can see the 84 degree reading we had on the 15th if you want to save 10% off on a nice affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10%. And I'll show you the comparison here between the Davis at my house, this uh, station, and SeaTac just off to my east. So looking at the Tempest, got 9 hundredths of an inch rain for 39 minutes. Pretty cool that it can tell you that data. The Davis picked up 13 hundredths of an inch. What did SeaTac have? 8 hundredths of an inch. So you can see the Tempest matched SeaTac even more closely than the Davis did. Very nice job there. Now we've got other stuff going on here. Red flag warning, eastern Washington, eastern Oregon here gusty winds monday noon through 8 p.m new fires could spread rapidly patchy blowing dust so slow down drive with caution if you see this dust starting to cross the roadway and this is for eastern washington as well just kind of highlighting the red flag warnings pattern change this week missoula montana they're on to it much colder get some high elevation snow out there as well so yeah here it comes this is red flag warning for portions of Montana as well. So if you're headed off east, you know, these gusty conditions here could be starting some fires. This was issued very early this morning. And you can see that critical fire danger out there across Montana that elevated across some of eastern Washington, Oregon, and isolated dry thunderstorm potential there across northern California. We've also got sneaker waves. So it can be a nice day out there as well. Sometimes these things just run up the coastline can really get you. Yeah, I've been caught in these a couple times actually uh, along the coastline. So this is the possibility from Vancouver Island all the way down the Washington coast, Oregon coast to California Monday through Tuesday. So watch out for that. And here's a good visual representation of that swell increasing along the coastline. A little bit of early season wave watching here, maybe along the coast. So if you're out and about there on the coastline, just have a heads up for that today and tomorrow. Now, looking at last night's European run, 500 millibars, there goes our system swinging through and the next one quickly on its heels here as we go through the day Wednesday, carving out across from the inner mountain west. Then the European starts to bring system after system here as we go through the later portions. This run ends at 144, but I'll show you what the GFS here shows in a moment. You can clearly see the troughing developing across much of the Pacific Northwest. And this is looking at the GFS, hot off the presses, 12Z run. There goes our system. That's what's kicking off those gusty winds and that fire danger, by the way. And then you can see the next trough drop down over the area here. And we could squeak out a nice day or two with this transient ridge moving across. You can see that ridge build across northern Canada. But then you can really see the storm track get active here right off the Pacific Northwest. You've got atmospheric river potential. You've got some blustery conditions or some windy conditions possible as well. And reinforcing shot there if you believe the GFS all the way in the 10 plus day time frame. And then why not? Not. Off in the fantasy land portion of GFS, look at this monster ridge building across the Pacific Northwest. So it would go from stormy to quite warm here across the area here. But we're getting towards that time of the year. Uh, probably not just yet, but once these big ridges set up, as you get later into fall, they can actually create inversions and fog at the lower elevations. But this is looking at the GFS. So let's put this into motion. And you can see the next system kind of slide down. There's the upper level look, carves out over the area. Weak frontal system slides through, and then we start to really turn the storms on here across much of the Gulf of Alaska. Atmospheric river potentials you can see there along the coastal areas. Additional low pressure systems moving towards Vancouver Island. Look at that one spin up right off the north tip there. This would bring blustery conditions, especially to the coastal areas as well. So interesting stuff there showing up in some of the model runs. And this is the European. Yesterday afternoon, this goes out quite a ways. There goes that frontal 
Central system last night. Did, did pick up that precept for some of the Central sound. Next system, a little bit juicier here, but not too, you know, the precipitation amounts aren't too incredible. But this is a chilly upper level low. Could bring some snow to the higher elevations of BC, northern Cascades as well. Then another weak frontal system rolls through here Friday night, Saturday morning, and then you see the storm track really get turned up here into the Pacific Northwest with the European showing multiple rounds of storms moving into the area and some interesting low pressure centers trying to dive into western Washington, southwest BC here, off in through the fantasy portion of the forecast. Now, looking at Seattle-Tacoma, you can see this next system coming up here. Probably looking at a quarter of an inch or more here for SeaTac. So that's nice. We have a lot of drought here across Pacific Northwest. So this precipitation will be much welcomed. Then you can see some potentially wetter systems out here towards the end of September. GFS showing something similar here with the initial system a little bit drier here on the GFS. But still looking like we're going to get some measurable precip out of that for much of the area. Bellingham, something similar there. We can see some of these loftier totals here with precipitation. This is 24 Four hour running total by the way this is up in vancouver island some big totals coming up here whistler higher terrain of bc as well now looking at seattle tacoma fantasy windstorm hunt member number 44 is showing a 55 mile per hour gust and why is this fantasy because look at all the other ensembles they are not showing that those huge wins here we're just nitpicking we're cherry picking here and you know so this is just purely entertainment right now even though some of the models do show some blustery conditions with some of those lows we have no idea what these individual systems will look like just yet. this is just simply too far out but we're going to look at number 44 here for entertainment purposes only the weather should be fun right and if we scroll, actually, let me back up. You'll see it there. There it goes. I was, got ahead of myself. But there's that low pressure system. Look at this 976 millibar low right up the coastline here. And look at this powerful gradient this would throw across some of western Oregon, western Washington, as this thing blasts into British Columbia here. And like I showed you on that fantasy windstorm, that would bring gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour inland there. But it's just one run. It's purely entertainment for right now. So just have fun with it. Looking at Seattle Tacoma, you can see we're probably, we might get another nice day out here though. Look, this is for Friday. You can see some mid 70s showing up here on the European and you know, not bad here for Thursday as well. So we might have a transient ridge moving through there before the storms really get active here as we go through the following week. Now, this is the minimum temperatures here as well. You can see some of these overnight lows are starting to get a bit chilly. You probably already feel that nip in the air here. Uh, you know, the overnight lows are starting to drop down a bit here. You can definitely feel it. So looking at total snow, 10 to 1 ratio, as the system dives down, you can see some of this higher terrain in the Cascades, BC, the Rockies, and then maybe some of Oregon. Sierra Nevada, down through Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Yellowstone getting their first snowfall this season. Always kind of a fun novelty to see the first flakes of the year fly. This is 6 to 10 day temperature outlook here. And again, we might have a couple nice days still upcoming here before that storm track. It's really turned up towards the Pacific Northwest. And you can kind of see that reflected in some of the precipitation potential here as well. 8 to 14 days, some below average signal for California. But that precipitation signal really starts to get ramped up here as we go towards the end of the month. And look at the drought. You know, we've been talking about this a little bit as well. There is some extreme drought across northwest Washington. And, you know, we could really put a dent in that with some nice systems bringing some precipitation into the area here. So let's hope we can really wipe out some of this drought here over the next month or two. But anyway, yeah, interesting stuff here. A lot of storms to look at here as we go through the end of September. We'll try to pinpoint this. We'll get some more confidence, of course, as we get closer to it. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Uh, well, oh, yeah, the, the El Nino thing, I'm probably not going to release it until Thursday because there's new data coming out then, and it'll allow me to polish up the video a little bit here as well. So I know um, I know some of you guys are looking forward to that here, but we'll just probably put it out here on Thursday. And so I'm not leading you guys along here. I've been doing that for about the last week now. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. I'll do my normal briefings tomorrow. El Nino video probably coming Thursday, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.